our Lord of Refuge, Kyabche Kenjin Tangarumbuchi. He passed away on the very special day of Sagatawa. And before his passing, uh, we have been like in connect with His Holiness uh, the 17th Kyaung Karmapa and also with His Holiness Siddhi Rinpoche, Gyaza Rinpoche, uh, all three of them. And according to these three great masters, uh, we are doing everything that we are doing now. And even when Rinpoche was sick and during that time, whatever prayers and whatever we did were all according to the wish of these uh, three great masters. And again, after the passing of uh, our very venerable Rinpoche, we have been in contact with uh, these three great masters and whatever they have been advising us, we are following their advices. So we are doing the prayers. So since uh, he is passing away and even after he passed away, uh, we didn't inform any of our students or any of our centers or other monasteries because His Holiness, uh, the 17th Karmapa, uh, advised us uh, not to disturb uh, because normally when a very high realized masters, uh, when they pass away, it is not like us because for someone like us, when we die, it's uh, the end of our life. But someone like for Rinpoche, even after their passing, they are still in their meditation state. So we didn't inform anyone because if we inform, then there will be lots of people coming here. And like we know, even now when we are doing meditation, we are always looking for a place where it is very quiet, where it has like lots of good energy like that. And then when we are meditating, if we hear like lots of noise, people moving around, uh, lots of distraction, then our meditation doesn't become uh, good. So just like that, even when these great masters, when they pass away, since they are in their meditation state, uh, we were advised not to disturb their meditation. So we didn't inform anyone for like three, four days. And Rinpoche was in his meditation state. And normally when people pass away, like most of us, the monks, uh, we see uh, lots of like uh, dead bodies. Because whenever people pass, uh, they invite us to do prayers. So we go to their homes, we do pujas, we do prayers, and we see like very drastic change when people pass away. So if somebody pass away today, and then if we are there like tomorrow, or maybe day after tomorrow, within a day, and sometimes it doesn't even take a day, uh, we can see a huge change in the physical structure of the body when people uh, die. But uh, with the case with Rinpoche uh, for like uh, more than four days uh, when he was uh, in his meditation state, uh, we didn't see any change in his uh, physical appearance. So it was very amazing for us uh, to see this. And even as we didn't go to his uh, room all the time, so we just went in the morning and still and we tried to see what was going on, but it was exactly the same for quite a few days. So that was very uh, unbelievable for all of us who were very fortunate able to be with him uh, during these times. I think there are lots uh, to be missed of uh, uh, our 
a very precious tower much for someone especially like me and it's very difficult uh, to accept that he had passed away because for someone like me even though I was appointed quite a long time back but uh, when Rinpoche was here it was extremely easy for me personally and not only for me uh, for all the Sangha of Tonga Monastery because even if we had to take a monk vow Rinpoche was there to give us the monk vows even if we had to take uh, an empowerment our Rinpoche was there to give us the empowerment. Even we had some difficulties in knowing about Buddhism, Rinpoche was there uh, to guide us on any questions uh, from the Dharma. And whatever we need, it was extremely easy for us. We didn't have to depend on so many or uh, different masters, different teachers, different people. Only because of Rinpoche, uh, we didn't have to look for any other uh, master because he had all the qualities because sometimes and uh, there are lots of great masters but uh, for some empowerment you have to receive from one uh, master then again for the vows you have to f receive from different master again to understand the scriptures you need to have like different teachers uh, we all know that we have all been seeing that and even for oral transmission again there's another masters like that but for someone like uh, Thangko Rinpoche, it was very different. For all the monks of Thangko Monasteries, we were all very fortunate because we received the monk vows from Thangko Rinpoche. We received all the empowerment from Thangko Rinpoche. We received all the oral transmission from Thangko Rinpoche. And we also received all the um, Buddhist text uh, explanation from Rinpoche. So it was extremely uh, easy for us because of Thangko Rinpoche. But now when he is not uh, alive anymore, it is uh, a very big void uh, to be filled. And not only that, uh, not only for us, uh, the monks and nuns of Thangko Monastery, but again when we look at the uh, life of Thangko Rinpoche, it's extremely uh, beneficial for everyone. Uh, when we look at his life and when we read his biography, sometimes it feels like uh, he has been teaching all his life because uh, when we read his biography, we will know that uh, His Holiness, the 17th Kyamvang Karma Bhava, was taught by Thangur Bhaji. And then uh, not only the 17th Kyamvang Karma Bhava, we also have like the four main regions of Kagiba. Uh, Shama Rinpoche, uh, Siddha Rinpoche, Gyatsa Rinpoche, Chamgu Rinpoche, all four of them were also taught by Thangko Rinpoche. And not only uh, them, but a lot of different Rinpoches. And even in our monastery, so many, lots of uh, Kempos, Lamas, monks, nuns, they were all taught by Rinpoche. And now we have a lot of Kempos here in the monastery and these are all only because of Thangur Rinpoche. So from this way of understanding, it seems like Rinpoche has been teaching all his life uh, to the uh, older monks and Rinpoches and Tulgus and Kempos like that. But again, if again we read the biography more, then again it seems like he has been traveling all around the world all the time. Uh, because uh, he has a lot of monasteries and centers in different countries. Uh, yeah, there is centers and monasteries in China, India, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Canada, US, England, Germany, a uh, lot of countries. And he has been teaching to all these foreign students also. And again, it seems like he has only been teaching to all these foreign students all his uh, lifetime and again uh, not only that if we look at what he has built like even here in Nepal uh, he has built uh, the monastery that we are here now uh, it is a very huge monastery we have like almost 
more than 600 monks and it seems like uh, he has been only building monasteries because there is a monastery here in Namabuddha there is a monastery in Bodhanath and then there is a monastery in Sampunath where there are more than 250 nuns and then again we have monasteries in Bhaktapur where the monks are doing retreat and there are also other practitioners who are practicing over there and then again monasteries in Manang, Nara, Sintapalchok and all these different places in Nepal and it seems like uh, he has only been building monasteries and not only that he had also built a school Sri Mangaldip school where more than 500 uh, young boys and girls are receiving free education, free accommodation, free meals and everything and even when he built the monastery it was not like uh, we just appoint uh, architecture and an in engineer and they will build it was not like that whenever we built a monastery Rinpoche had the final say and he was always uh, advising the architectures and engineers how to build the monastery uh, how to make the shrine hall how to do the carving how to place where to place so it seems like all his life he has been building monasteries and schools so it is very uh, unimaginable for someone like us uh, to see all the activities of Thangarambuche and uh, it cannot be described uh, even for months and months and for this interview for within few minutes I think it's extremely impossible to describe everything that what he has done for Buddha Dharma. teaching is still alive uh, like for example the Buddha passed away more than 2500 years back but still we have his teachings we still follow his teachings his followers are all around the world uh, practicing Buddhism so even if Buddha was here all he could do was give teachings and even now we are able to receive his teachings from all the scriptures that we have and just like that, even for Thangur Rinpoche, even though he has passed away, but uh, now because of all the improvement and development of all the gadgets, uh, we have all most of his teachings, uh, recordings on YouTube, on iCloud and everywhere. And not only that, we also have lots of books. Uh, composed by Rinpoche so we have been publishing all his books all these years and again maybe in a year or two we will be coming out uh, with all the collective work of Thangur Rinpoche so we will be publishing it in Tibetan and maybe in the future because uh, since we have a lot of students from the West, from China, from everywhere, maybe they will be able to translate them into their own respective languages. So uh, we do have all this in Tibetan. So even though <coughs> Rinpoche has passed away, but still we are able to receive his teachings from all these uh, teachings that he had given uh, during his lifetime. And uh, according to our understanding of Buddhism so if we are like in the beginner stage and uh, they are the practices of Mundu if we are in the higher stage we have the practices of Mahamudra and all the practices in between so all these practices all those teachings uh, we have 
their recordings uh, in the internet uh, and in books. So we are still very fortunate uh, since we are still able to receive all these teachings. Essence is the bodhicitta or the Buddha nature or having a good heart in simple term. Sometimes when we say bodhicitta, uh, it is very difficult for people to understand what a bodhicitta means. But actually it just means uh, having a good heart. And if you don't have a good heart, uh, then you will not be able to be a good practitioner at all. So that is like the main essence. And only from the uh, good heart, uh, from the bodhicitta, everything will grow. All the positivity will grow from the bodhicitta. And sometimes uh, we might think that just having a, a good heart is not so beneficial, but actually it is not like that. Uh, sometimes maybe we are not able to help because of our physical condition or maybe because of our uh, wealth or because maybe we are very far from someone. But uh, of course, if we are able to help from our body, speech and mind, then of course that is extremely important. But at least if we are not able to help from body and speech, but if we have the good heart, and if we keep practicing that again and again and again, and if there is an opportunity when we are able to help from our body or from our speech, then it comes very naturally to us. It will not be uh, like uneasy or difficult to help. Because these days when people are in difficulties and when there are some people around and when they don't, uh, have the practice of bodhicitta or practice of good heart. So even if they see someone in a very dire, critical situation, they will not be ready to help. But if you keep on practicing good heart every day and when there is an opportunity or when there comes a time when you see someone facing difficulties, it will be very easy for us to help someone. Uh, according to our, or uh, depending on our capabilities. So the essence is definitely having a good heart and everything will uh, grow from that. <laughs> Everything was uh, from Trungpa Rinpoche himself. 
So all the teachings, all the empowerment, all the advices, everything. And as all of you might know that he did appoint me as his uh, successor. So I am like the one who is responsible uh, to carry on all the institutions uh, that were built by Rinpoche. But uh, we have to know that even though I was appointed as his representative or successor, but all of us who have received uh, teachings uh, from uh, Rinpoche, or all of us who have like maybe received empowerment or maybe received blessing, we are all like the representative of uh, Thangu Rinpoche. So it is not like only me is the representative. These days, uh, since I am in Nepal, uh, people say that most of the Nepalese, uh, when they go abroad, they don't come back. So that's the sad reality of our country here in Nepal. And those people who went abroad and who didn't come back are not like the main appointed representative of Nepal. Those are not like the from the royal family or maybe the president or maybe the prime minister. Those are not the one. Those who went and who didn't come back are like the local or normal Nepalese people. But we do say that all oh, Nepalese people when they go abroad, they don't come back. So it doesn't have to be like the one who is appointed. Even those are very normal Nepalese people uh, because they went abroad and then they didn't come back. So now even we say that uh, almost everybody here in Nepal, we do say that. So some of them go to like the West, some of them go to uh, Middle East, some of them go to Australia, they go there, they have a good life over there. And maybe they will come here during the festivals, uh, be with their uh, families but again they will go back. So it is not like the main uh, representative from the government or the royal families. And just like that, uh, but we do say that uh, the Nepalese people. So just like that, uh, even for us, uh, it is not only my responsibility. So no matter who, whether we are a monk or a nun, or just a disciple of Rinpoche or the uh, kids from the school, students from the school, if any of us like do something good, so it is definitely uh, Rinpoche's representative. People will say someone from the Tango Monastery or connected with Tango Rinpoche is of huge benefit or of great help uh, to the world. Or if any of us does something bad, uh, from the body or the speech of the mind, it doesn't necessarily have to be me or like a Tulku or a Kembo, any of us from the Tango Monastery. We all, I think, have the same responsibility in like if we are able to grow the uh, Tango institution, then that is extremely good. But if we are not able to grow, but at least now it is all our responsibilities uh, to at least not diminish uh, whatever Rinpoche has built and during all his lifetime, the school, the monasteries, uh, for the monks, the monastery, for the nuns, the clinics and everything. We have to make sure that everything runs as smooth as before. So I think it is all our collective work uh, to be responsible 
so that whatever Rinpoche has built doesn't go to waste. So I think uh, we are all uh, representative of uh, Tango Rinpoche, so it is not only me. So if we are all uh, believe in that, then we will definitely be able to improve uh, whatever Rinpoche has built. And for now, like I am the main representative, but still, whenever there is something important to do, uh, we do uh, meet all the senior monks and senior nuns. Every once a month we meet and we try to discuss what we can improve uh, in our institutions. So it is not like I am the only one who is taking the decision, so it is more like a teamwork now. see one Rinpoche and if you ask for a monk vow, uh, everybody, all the Rinpoches will not give monk vows. There are like certain Rinpoches who will only give the monk vows. And then again, if you need empowerment, there are only like certain Rinpoches who will give empowerment. Again, you will have to look for another Rinpoche. If you need to have like an oral transmission, again, there is like a different Rinpoche from whom you need to get the oral transmission. And again, if you need to like the understanding of the scripture or the Dharma, then again, they are like different Rinpoches. So people might face difficulties in looking for like few Rinpoches, especially if they are not at the same place. If you have to go to the East today for empowerment and tomorrow again, maybe to the West, for oral transmission and again to the north for understanding the Dharma, then it is quite difficult. But when you were able to meet Thangur Rinpoche, uh, there were never the questions. Whatever you needed according to the Dharma, whether you wanted an empowerment, whether you wanted an oral transmission, whether you wanted a monk vow or lay person vow, or whether you just wanted to understand uh, the Dharma, some questions, some doubts, uh, just meeting him, any difficulties you faced in Buddhism could be solved. So I think that is uh, one of the main reasons a lot of people have faith and love uh, Rinpoche. Before Rinpoche passed away, uh, Rinpoche was giving oral transmission uh, through online and the day before Rinpoche was admitted to hospital, he was still giving oral transmission. And during that time, Rinpoche was giving oral, oral transmission three days a week. So he was giving oral transmission on Saturday, Tuesday and Thursdays. So it had been going for the last three years at least. And on Thursday, he gave oral transmission and uh, even during that time, he was already quite sick and we requested him to go uh, to see the doctors, uh, maybe go to the hospitals, uh, but he didn't accept. And on Friday, his health was quite bad. And again, the attendants, they requested Rinpoche, maybe we should uh, go to the hospital, but he still declined and he was worried about the oral transmission that was going to be uh, taking place on Saturday. So even during his last uh, stages of his life, he was still giving 
so much importance to all these Buddhist teachings. And when we uh, went to the hospital on Friday, and when the doctors, when they checked, uh, when they did an x-ray and everything, they were very surprised seeing that uh, Rinpoche's health is quite bad, extremely bad. And how come he is uh, only now at the hospital? How come he didn't come earlier? So even like uh, for someone like him who was above 90 years old, when his health was not so good, but he was still giving so much importance uh, in teaching. So if we haven't uh, forcefully, I should say, uh, taken him to hospital, I think maybe he will still be giving oral transmission and maybe uh, he might have like passed away even during the class, uh, maybe that might be possible also, I guess. Uh, so seeing like that, uh, it is really amazing how someone can give so much importance in giving teachings, uh, having so much faith and devotion to the Dharma. So when we see like that, uh, definitely uh, we will have more devotion to the teacher, more faith to the teacher and more love uh, to our teacher. Thank <laughs> you.